Today I'm going to talk about the golden spiral and why I think it's a load of First of all, before arbitrarily using this overlay on your images after reading an article on the Golden Spiral, it's good to know the history behind it. The Greek mathematician Euclid, back around about 300 BC, first described it as the division extreme and mean ratio. My name is Euclid and I rock at math. He came to the conclusion that if you draw a line and break it into two parts, if the ratio between those two parts is the same as the ratio between the overall length and the larger part, the parts are said to be in the golden ratio. That's right, b****. This is also closely related to the Fibonacci sequence, which is said to date back to the time of Pingala, which was around about 450 to 200 BC. Pingala was the ancient Indian author of the Chanda Ahastra, also called Pingala Sutras, now, if I've pronounced any of those words badly, I do apologize. The Fibonacci sequence is basically a series of numbers where every number is made up by adding the previous two numbers together. Now, by taking the ratio of successive Fibonacci numbers, you can get closer and closer to the golden ratio. Now, from 300 BC right through until around about the 1500s was all a little bit quiet until the Italian Renaissance. And this is where the golden ratio started to get its notoriety. Mathematician Luca Pacioli wrote a book called De Divina Proportione, which basically means the divine proportion and he wrote that in 1509. Check out all of my math gadgets. I'm away you cooler than Euclid. Pacioli used drawings by Leonardo da Vinci that incorporated the golden ratio and it is possible that da Vinci was the first to call it secta oera or the golden section. Now in the 1800s the American mathematician Mark Barr used the Greek letter phi to represent this number. I'm raising the bar. Now on top of that there are two things that are said to be related to the golden ratio which are the golden rectangle and the golden spiral. These are basically graphical representations of this golden ratio. For the golden rectangle, take a perfect square and divide its width and height by 1.618. Then do the same with a smaller square and the same again with a smaller square again and so on and so forth. If you continue this process, you'll end up with a rectangle whose proportions are said to be the most pleasing and balanced. This is basically not far off the size of your HD or 4K TV. Not quite the same, but almost. Now the golden spiral can then be created by drawing a quarter circle in each of these squares, getting tighter and tighter as the squares get smaller. Everything from the pyramids to the Greek Parthenon are said to have used phi in the design with a golden ratio being used to work out the length and height of those said structures. The problem is that a lot of the time these are approximations, or if it's close enough, it's considered to be the golden ratio. So instead of being perfectly fitting, it's around about right. Now this sounds a little bit like my approach to pretty much everything, but that's a different story. Now I've read quite a few articles defending this approximation, but this is using maths. And in maths, an approximation is akin to getting it wrong. If I said four by four was around about 15, I'd be wrong. With the human body as well, there are a lot of different lengths that are said to follow the golden ratio. Say for instance, if I take a line from my butt to my chin, and then a line from my chin to my belly button, the ratio between these two is 1.6, or around about the same as a golden ratio. But the human skeletal system is made up of so many different lengths of structure, you will always find certain measurements that will fall into the golden ratio, or thereabouts. And it's the same in nature. Pine cones are said to follow the golden ratio as are young fern branches. However, in nature, there are as many things that don't follow the golden ratio as there are that do. The marine mollusk Nautilus bellowensis, commonly known as the Nautilus, is said to follow the golden ratio and can be seen if you cut the shell in half. However, this is actually a logarithmic spiral, which means it turns by a constant angle along its length. This is not the golden ratio, even though it might look quite similar. And this is the main problem. We as humans want to find order in chaos. We want to find patterns even when there aren't any. And close enough seems to be the norm for the golden spiral. Now, back to photography. This attitude of close enough seems to fit pretty much every example I've ever seen of people trying to relate the golden spiral to their photography. Just do a Google search on the golden spiral in photography and you will find hundreds of images with a golden spiral laid over the top of them. And most of the time, they've just put an element of the photograph or part of their subject on the tightest part of the spiral or near where that spiral tightens with no other relation to the spiral whatsoever. Even shots of spiraling staircases don't fit it perfectly. And it is a case of, well, it's close enough, 
so that'll do. So whether you place the golden spiral over a rose, a nautilus shell, a hurricane or a wave, or any kind of photo for that matter, sometimes it'll be quite close, but it'll never really fit that well. One thing I think that this does denote is a kind of hierarchical class system, where people who think they're using the golden spiral to get better photos are just kind of lavishing in belief perseverance. They must be better as they're connected intrinsically to the masters of art and even Leonardo da Vinci himself. And therefore, they're definitely not a novice or a beginner. And this is why I think the golden spiral is bull I say, if you're a beginner, Ignore any article you see on the golden spiral and concentrate more on crafting your art. The rule of thirds is wrongly named and shunned by those people who think they have found the divine proportions. Ignore those people. The rule of thirds, or the guide of thirds as I like to call it, is actually such a handy overlay to have and you can use it to break the rules as well. If your subject is looking one way, you can use it to place them on one of the vertical lines to give them kind of a looking room or you can place their eyes on the intersections between the lines, but you don't have to. If you want to place your subject in the middle of the frame, the grid can help you get your subject closer to the middle of that frame. And you can even use those horizontals to get a nice flat horizon. You can place it in the center, you can place it at the top, you can place it at the bottom of your frame. Pretty much wherever you want, you can kind of use it as a guide to make or break those rules. Like I've already said, in nature, as many things don't follow the golden ratio as do follow it. In photography, it seems more don't follow it than do follow it. And this is the point I'm trying to make. It is a chaotic world, so just go out and photograph it. And don't worry whether you follow or break the rules. And if anyone talks to you about using the golden spiral or they're trying to force their beliefs onto you, just back away and leave the conversation as quickly as possible. Now, these are just my rambling thoughts and I'm kind of having a little bit of fun with it. And I'm probably completely full of it as well. But it is one of those things that makes me chuckle. It kind of just doesn't work for me. Now, what do you think? Have you come across the golden spiral? Is it something you use? Or do you think that it's kind of a way of looking too deeply into the process of photography? Let me know in the comments below. It'll be great to hear your thoughts and try not to get too nasty. Now, if you want to learn more about composition where I probably contradict everything I've just said in this video, click on this one next. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in everything photography. I'll see you next time.